Hello, this is a video that will show you how to link your rigs. So when you create something, you should always nest everything inside one single collection. In my case, it's Galaxy Chan version 1. And also make sure that everything that you have created is rigged or bind or weighted against the armature. And that the armature itself is working, like I'm showing in this example. So the next thing that you want to do is to put every object inside one single collection including the controls, the rigs, and all of the objects as you can see right here. So let me just move all of this out of the way because we will not be exporting this. I'm going to be moving this into the general collection inside the scene. So that way we only have Galaxy Chance versions here one collection right here. I'm going to mark it in a green color so that everyone knows what this is about. Okay, so. It's just a personal preference to, uh, you know, create a very highlight color and see what my collection has. So now we are going to port this uh, Galaxy Chan model from this Blender instance to another Blender instance. And with that, we are also going to export the rig 001UI.py. And this is created, this is script is created when you generate a rigify rig okay so all of these things all of these commands create the controls for your visibility layers plus the bones the formation and other controls that rigify generates whenever you have this kind of model in this case you can check out on the item tab the rig layers and all of them are directly connected to all of the bones that are named here layering um, I'm sorry, writing the names on the layers, it's part of the generation for the controls on the Rigify um, automatic dot pi generation. But anyways, let's get back to subject. So I have my model, I have my body, the boots, the face, the hair, even the modifiers that you have in your original model are going to be exported or are going to be linked when we do this on the second instance of Blender. Even if you turn off your modifiers, you can then uh, modify them or tweak them in the other Blender scene. Okay, so I'm just showing you what I have here. I have mirror active for some of them. Like this is an old armature, so I'll delete it. Make sure that everything is just clean. You know, like everything that you're using here, all of the modifiers that you're using here are going to be useful uh, for your model okay so that's important and next um, let's export this or rather let's just save this file I'm going to be saving this I'm going to give it a name in my case it's going to be Gal Galaxy Chan sorry and it is just embed ready okay so this is another instance of Blender this is a brand new Blender this is someone else's workstation so you're going to go to file and then use link when you click link, you have to navigate and make sure that you're targeting this exact same collection inside the blend file. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. Um, whenever you make changes into the original file, and this is the important thing about linking, then those changes will be reflected on any other scene that has this model linked. So I'm going to go into file, link, and let me just do this once again. So this is the file, click, click, and then you will enter or you can see it right here in the list icons or rather a, as a capture screenshot uh, icon and now I'm going to navigate into collection so as you can see all of the folders this is the internal blender navigation system or organization system if we can say it that way so let's go into collections and inside collection we're going to target Galaxy Chan version 01 because that's the name of our collection look at right here and that's why we wanted to identify it with this name because that's uh, the versioning name that we're going to do. You can also retarget other versions, but we're going to cover that in some other video. So, all right, you have it right here. It has been linked into your new Blender scene, and I can see that Galaxy Chan model is on this new scene. So right now it's compiling the shaders, and you can see it's all just a plain shader, plain white shader. But it's taking its time to compile and once you go to text review you can see her she's completely there and you can move her but there's a difference if you now go to item you do not see the properties and moreover if you select the rig and then you press tab 
you will not have the pose mode. And this is because it has been brought as an asset, as a steel asset, and not really as a rig, as you intended it in the beginning. So the easiest way to do this right now in Blender 3.5 is right click on this, and then come to Library Override, which is going to be the definitive name for this kind of workflow, okay? So in Library Override, you can select Make, select content or selected and the content and this is the the one that i recommend you choosing you also have reset to to um unlink if we can say it that way and you can also clear whatever you link the model that you link uh, this is possible so that you can reset some of the materials or probably corrupted files but anyways you also have resync and reinforce resync and this is available whenever you're refreshing a brand new change in the original source file while it's being live linked to your uh, current scene. You can also come here into object and it's right here library override make but that will take too much uh, too many steps okay so I don't really recommend going this way because you're only going to get confused. So I'm just teaching you where in the blender menus this option is but then you have to take other several steps while doing it directly from the outliner, it's much comfortable, it's much faster, it works even better. But it's just exactly the same thing. Although these are different names, they do the same exact thing. Okay, so we have it right here. Let's go back to our main subject, right click on it, and then library override, and then we're going to select make. And from there, we're going to select to, to select selected and content. Okay, so this makes it locally by giving you this icon okay this makes the asset uh, being connected locally with this link icon which means that it is reading it from another external scene okay so now if you go and select your model you do have your other options available which in our case is going to be the post mode we want that we want to select the post mode and then we can start posing Galaxy Chan however we like. We can create the entire animation if you have planned to link a rig to your current scene, create animations, and you even have all the rig layers because once we bring this model, everything that belongs to the model, shaders, modifiers, even scripts are going to come alive. But now you see a difference. Whenever we're switching on or off, a different color appears here, not like in the original scene. This is because it's being currently driven by the local scene that's why you have a different color there if you go to scripting in just the case that you do not see the properties of the rig you can come here to scripting and then locate on the text block the script menu which in this case is rig 001 ui.py and then click here where you have this play icon to execute it to run it now in blender 3.5 you're going to get the first time at least a warning about um, allowing scripts to run but then uh, you already know this is just for rigify so you will get the rig layers property menu okay so that's basically it you don't have to do anything else and from here on you start to animate now you would ask Mr. Schiller, why is this useful? Why do I need to link the rig instead of just, you know, importing it or appending it or even modifying the original file? The original file, while, why do I have to do that? I'll show you. Because if you're under production in, in anime production or as uh, part of a team, animator team, your animator di director will most of the time change the rig. Not only in appearance, but also in color, materials, whatever. So you modify the original source, as we're doing right now. I'm exaggerating this boot because, I don't know, he wants to make a chibi version of it. So let's just imagine that the original rig has been modified, and this is then saved. And once it's saved, you do your entire animation, you do your entire stuff, but then how do you see it? updated how do you know that the original source file has been updated well you can come here to the original collection right click and then in library override you can come here in where it says troubleshoot where it says troubleshoot you have the option to uh reinforce uh resync sorry resync enforce see this option right here so that's one way to do it and sometimes it works while you have your scene active and the other one is just resync 
If neither of those options work, you can always restart Blender and then once it opens, it's going to read the original source file and then it will update. And I want to show you that right now. I'm going to be closing this Blender file so that you can notice the changes that I'm doing here to the original file source where her boot is kind of big, okay? And let's just let's just imagine that in my original file, I'm going to also hide a skirt, okay? So this is how she's going to look. The, the animation director, you know, he decided that, all right, let's switch this uh, model's appearance. And let's, switch it, let's switch off the skirt. So again, I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to library override, then come to troubleshoot, resync, but then you don't see any changes active. Mr. Schiller, this is wrong. Well, basically, since I'm, do, I'm using this in the 3.5 alpha version, it's most likely it's not working at the moment, but once you get it out in the solid release, it will work. So what I'm going to do is to save this scene with a new name. This is, remember, this is another station, another artist, uh, computer. So I'm going to be calling this scene link, uh, link model. Yeah, that's a, a very descriptive name. And then I'm going to reset Blender by just, you know, opening a brand new blank scene. And now I'm going to be opening back my um, linked model.blend scene. And what do you know? We're going to find um, another way you can do that. It's by file open recent. And what do you know? We find all of the changes already propagated to our scene. This is called push the changes. So all of these changes have been pushed to all of the other rigs that have live links to this original model. So as you can see, she does not have the skirt and she also has the bigger boot. Now with this, you can start imagining one practical case could be fixing her hair. That's why I did a very simple hair so that you can, you know, take your time, update her hair, uh, rig it, and then, you know, all the changes are going to be propagated back. Mr. Schiller, but now I'm working on my scene with the very old model. How do I know whenever my uh, animation director changes the model so I can update it? Well, you have to communicate and besides that, you just have to refresh your scene every time that he says that he has created a new change for the original model. For example, if, if he doesn't like the color of the hair and he may change it to a bride hair, then that change is going to be pushed or propagated to the other scenes that have this live link connected. So I'm going to demonstrate that you do not lose anything. If you go back to file again and then reopen, kind of like refresh uh, the original file where it has linked. Now you can see that even though you have posed this model, animated this model, you still inherit all of the changes from the original source file. So we get the skirt and the boot back in its original sizes. So thank you very much.